Welcome all, as the 6th Starmus Global Science Festival is set to kick off, a group of Polish artists have arrived in town. Members of the Institute B61, an international art and science collective, are going to make a performance in Yerevan on the sidelines of the festival. I'm joined now by astronomer and curator Jan Sfierkowski, who founded the Institute B61 group to discuss this. So Jan, morning, thank you hello. very much for your time. Thank Pleasure. you for coming down. Thank you for having me. So the show is called Evolution, The Evolution of Stars. Uh, it will run from September 7th to 10th, and it will take place three to four times a day. Uh, no tickets will be sold, but those interested can register online and attend the performance. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Why is it called The Evolution of Stars? And um, I also hear the location is rather intriguing. Can you tell us where exactly it's going to be? Of course. Uh, well, I can't tell you where. It's <laughs> this is the whole point uh, why it's secret. But I, can, I will tell you a bit, a bit more about the location and the way that the audience is going to get to the performance, mm. because it's quite unusual as well. But first things first, the evolution of the stars. I'm an astronomer and I studied astronomy for years. And during my study, I have observed that astronomy started changing. I started to have this cosmic perspective on life, which is a very strange thing and a very strange philosophical concept, which somehow changes the way that we perceive reality which surrounds us. Uh, just a fun fact, if you just imagine that we are alive for, let's say, 70 years, and then we are so afraid of being of death, basically. But then we never think of this, that we never existed before as well. So the natural state of a human is not to exist, not to exist. So this is the type of things that you learn during well, when you study astronomy and, and somehow you find a lot of philosophy in it, a philosophy which is somehow hidden within the equations. And I was trying to invent a language, how to communicate with my closest family, even my mom, my girlfriend, like everyone. And I came up with a performance about stars, about the cosmos, the evolution of stars in 2009 during the UNESCO International Year of Astronomy. And ever since we've been showing uh, the evolution of the stars all around the world and now for the first time in Yerevan. And so how exactly, uh, what can you tell us about the performance? How exactly is the evolution of stars translated into art and artists? The, what we are trying to do is we are trying to create sensory experiences of distant uh, objects like stars. Because the thing is that we only, uh, uh, we only imagine stars. We see some dots, but we cannot touch them, we cannot smell them. And it's the same with electrons or protons. We, we can only imagine them because they are so small that we have no idea, for example, how one single electron tastes. Be because we, we don't even have senses to do that. So in Institute B61, we are trying to create sensory experiences of the invisible world, the very distant or the very small. Mm -hmm. And the location, there's something uh, interesting about the location. The location is a very iconic building in Yerevan. Uh, for the first time ever, uh, a show like this, an immersive theater is going to happen in that building. It's going to be in the undergrounds of that building, which reassemble kind of underground city. Absolutely mind blowing. But we want to keep it a secret. This is why people will meet in the Republic Square and they will travel in a darkened bus and will enter through a secret tunnel directly to the undergrounds. So they will stay in that space for around an hour and only after they get out they will realize which part of Yerevan, what building and so on. And you've been to the venue, were you quite pleased with it? Oh, it's amazing. I have to say it's absolutely amazing. And it's, it's even better that I think we are the first ever to do uh, art in that place. And uh, we are honored, I have to say, because it's a really, as I said, it's an iconic place in Yerevan. Everyone knows it, but n almost no one knows what, still, what, what kind of a gem is hidden in that building. And I understand this is the first time you are in Armenia. I know this is a bit of a cl cliche question, but how are you finding Armenia? What are your impressions of the country so far? Armenia is absolutely amazing, I have to say. I, had, I have a couple of friends, Armenian friends, mostly from the diaspora, which is outside of Armenia. We talked a lot about Armenia. It's, uh, it's mind-blowing. Yerevan is absolutely a, a European city. I, I, um, I try to not have, um, when I go somewhere, I try to not read too much, not to create expectations, but also 
I prefer to experience. And I have to say that the experience of Yerevan, because I went also to Burakan, which is also amazing and, and the observatory is mind blowing. But uh, basically Yerevan is, uh, is a really cool city and I'm looking forward to coming back. Mm -hmm. And the Institute B61, this collective, this group uh, ensemble, what can you tell us about it? How did it start and what was the idea around it? The idea behind Institute B61 is to create a new language of communication of science. Mm -hmm. Not only communication, but this experiential feeling of science. So you can actually taste a planetary nebula or touch a white dwarf. And we do it via installations, concerts, uh, live acts. So it's all about very immersive interactive art that allows you to grasp what a black hole is or uh, a red giant. Instead of reading, you're going to experience a red giant. And Institute B61 was created as a group of kind of translators of science. So we translate science into contemporary art. There is a core group of uh, artists that uh, uh, work within Institute B61. Uh, Stefan Kornacki, Dominik Smurzny, Dagmara Pochyła, Mariusz Lubomski and many, many more people who worked with us throughout the years. Not only in Poland, but different countries from India, Latvia, Portugal. We've been in, in a variety of places and we are kind of building a, a art sci international ensemble. And we are working now with a lot of really interesting Armenian artists and I hope to create connections and network uh, and maybe bring some Armenian artists with us to the next country that we are going to, just like we are bringing a really interesting uh, electro pop band from Mumbai, India, mm -hmm. uh, guys from Lakshmi Bomb we've met, performed together and since uh, 2017 they became a part of our group and me travel and perform together. And you know, a lot of exciting things are happening in the world at the moment with regards to science. The James Webb Space Telescope is taking incredible pictures of the cosmos. There's also uh, the first ever picture of a black hole, which was released to the public. At the same time, there is a perception that amongst many people, including young people, there's almost a disinterest in science. Whereas if you look at Armenia, for example, a lot of the murals from the Soviet times are of cosmonauts, are of space. And back then, also in the West, there was a lot of interest in science and inspiration among kids. Do you find that that it is a problem nowadays, that that interest has gone? And how can we reinvigorate that interest? No, of course, it's a huge problem. Uh, that uh, mm, The thing is that w we should create kind of uh, emotional relation with science and with scientific problems because they describe reality. We are very emotional about myths and legends that we come up with, like also religious, and we are so emotional about it. But then science is also a way of knowing. The, o the only problem is with science is that somehow, sometimes it's too complicated or the scientists do not actually want to involve in the communication with the society. So yes, it's a huge problem. You mentioned uh, cosmonauts and astronauts and uh, all that was going on around uh, when uh, US and USSR were trying to get to space and uh, they were racing who's going to be the first uh, uh, human walking on the moon. But then uh, what we don't understand is that exactly at that point of time um, when finally the Apollo missions landed on the moon and we saw the Earth from space, this round picture of our common home without colors, without borders, this had a huge impact on our pop culture and also resulted in the creation of many environmental agencies. For the first time ever, going to the moon, people kind of rediscovered Earth. We understood that we are citizens of one planet and, if, and that we share the same ocean, we share the same Earth. And it's extremely important to try to build this identity of, a, of this planetarian identity of a, uh, and, and not national because we are facing now like problems that we've never faced uh, and challenges that we've never faced as, a, as the human race like the global warming for example and we can only address it via this uh, common identity if we are going to uh, divide ourselves again into borders and colors then we are gone as a whole. And uh, yes, it's a, a cosmos 
And this cosmic perspective that we started this interview with is exactly what, what has the ability to unite us mm -hmm. and through the, this cosmic belonging, because in the end we all came from stars and like, the, you know, the, uh, in our blood we have a lot of, uh, like even iron came from supernova explosions. So me and you, we have uh, most probably a couple of supernovas, if not, if not dozens within us. So this is the, the kind of perspective and philosophy that we really need to work with and we need to try to communicate and, and make people understand that we are all the same. We may differ, but we came from the same place and we are going exactly in the same direction. And finally, I want to ask, how did yourself and uh, the Institute get involved with Starmus? And furthermore, Starmus is putting a real focus on the duality or the relationship between artistry and science. Um, what do you think about the relationship between science and artistry? Uh, the, the, first of all, I think it's uh, since basically for the la I think the last two centuries were absolutely uh, tragic in in uh, in terms of the relation between art and science because we somehow uh, believed and still believe that they that there is a dichotomy between art and science and that they are completely different and that they should be done differently and and. It's better for the scientists to stick to science and artists or the, or the social sciences not to interfere with true knowledge, which is absolutely not true and which is actually harmful. Because then again, it's like if you uh, create this division, we end up in the very same place of uh, indifference towards science. And uh, well, we are mostly living in democracies. In a democracy, you have to have 50% of people voting for an idea. If you want uh, global warming to stop, you have to have 50% of people voting for the global warming to stop. If, if they don't care, then you have maybe 5% of the, you know, of the scientists voting that let's stop the global warming. It, it, it makes absolutely no sense to, uh, that this division was created and that we are uh, trying to solve global huge problems in, through niche approach. Like we are stuck in our niches and we are trying to solve a problem which um, w basically encompasses so many disciplines and ways of knowing that it only can be addressed holistically. So in my opinion, festivals like Starmus are the new wave of uh, introducing a new culture, a culture which is based on both uh, humanity, social sciences and sciences. They really have to come together and uh, no, I, I believe Starmus is a mind-blowing initiative and I keep my fingers crossed uh, for the benefit of the festival. Mm -hmm. Oh Yang, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. So the show is called The Evolution of Stars and it will take place from September 7th to 10th. You can find out more about it in the description of this video. Thank you for joining us on CivilNet.